This episode, I want to talk about another method of sending data from your Rails application to the JavaScript to be used. So JavaScript runs more or less in a separate domain than your Rails application. Your Rails application just simply generates HTML that displays this page, and then your JavaScript runs, and it only has access to URLs and the data that it returns. So in the past, in episode 96, which you should watch if you haven't already, um, that episode we talk about using an Ajax request to generate these in-app notifications. Now these notifications are loaded using the notifications Dot JSON URL, and you'll be able to see those um, inside the, J the JSON object that you get back, which is uh, an array of objects. So if we were to go into another browser and create a forum post, then that user would be able to refresh the notifications URL and see that there's a new notification um, with the ID of number four. So that actually needs to be requested continuously and this URL needs to be pinged over and over again in order for this um, to show up. Also notice that when the JavaScript runs, when the page reloads, it can sometimes take a second to load up the number of notifications and then the UI will have to change a little bit to show that you have one new notification. So if we were to go refresh this again, you'll see there's none and then it does the request and then is able to parse those. And if that takes a little bit of time, then you're gonna see your page jumping around. And that's something that can be kind of painful on your first experience. So how can we also get this information preloaded on the page so that we can um, automatically set that up and display the notification number immediately, no matter how long that Ajax request runs? Well, the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna embed JSON into your HTML and I'll show you that now. If you've watched episode uh, 96, this is the exact same code from that, except that I put a timeout for one second so that when the page loads, that um, little delay happens. And that's gonna simulate network latency, and that's gonna be uh, what you would experience, something like that in production. You've probably seen Facebook's UI update like that as well. So how can we go about preloading this so that it automatically shows that number when the page loads. Well, let's take a look at our application.html erb, and let's look at that notifications um, uh, HTML that we have on there. So this is actually our notification stuff. We have the data behavior um, that specifies that this anchor tag is actually part of the notifications um, JavaScript. If you don't remember in the previous episode, I talked about data behavior tags, and this basically denotes that this HTML tag and all of its children will run with certain JavaScript behaviors. And that's just a way for you to decouple the JavaScript from the HTML um, tags specifically and the CSS classes and IDs. So it helps you really uh, separate all that responsibility out, which is good. But this is also very valuable because of those data tags for stuff like preloading notifications into your HTML. So rather than going and waiting for that round trip um, Ajax request, we could actually embed the Ajax here. And so maybe we had data notifications and this was what embedded that JavaScript or that JSON object basically. So if we were able to embed JSON here, we would have our JavaScript to be able to look at this tag, pull out that data, and then immediately, um, when the page loads, show the notifications, and then later it can just go check for updates. Let's actually go do that. Let's delete this, and let's go back to that localhost 3000 notifications.json, and grab all of this JSON, and then just paste it into this data notifications um, tag. Now I'm gonna change the quotes here so that we don't get weird escaping, um, but that will go ahead and embed the JSON into the HTML. So now, if we refresh our page here, we can open up our JavaScript console and we can just look for data behavior equals notifications and um, this should grab us back our list object, and it does. And here you can see the notifications, and that means that we can just call data 
notifications on that object and we'll get an array of JSON objects back. So this is all the code that we actually need um, in order to reference that JSON that's preloaded into the page. So when the page loads, we can go and um, render immediately. So all we're gonna have to do is go to our js.coffee and let's actually comment out this code here so that um, when the page loads, we'll never display notifications. So here, let's actually use that preloaded JSON that we have on the page and let's just console.log that. So I'll say at notifications dot data notifications. And this is that part that we're already doing in the console. So we just need to use that variable to access the embedded notifications. So in our page loads, we should see that same array gets printed out and it does. So this is cool. We've already got that going. And that just means that we now have the array. And as it turns out, that's the exact same data object as we get back from the Ajax request. So that means we can just simply call at handle success with that data and we should be able to refresh the page and immediately you're going to see that you get the JavaScript notifications rendering um, and they'll of course have to wait until the body and the um, CSS is parsed and everything and the DOM is loaded but the JavaScript will run immediately then afterwards and you will have the most minimal delays uh, as possible for that. It might be kind of surprising that we can literally reuse the handle success here from uh, rendering after we get the JSON back, but that is all we really need to do. So that means that you could actually go through and do this um, immediately upon page load, and then you could also um, use that code for um, my set timeout just to simulate the browser being slow. You could actually replace this with a set interval and you could set it up to check for new notifications every five seconds, for example. And then you would get sort of a simulated real-time uh, set of notifications. So that would be all you would have to change for that to preload them immediately on the page and then to check for updates every five seconds. So it's pretty cool. It allows you to really have a uh, easy to work with notification system. And then the last piece that we have to do is to go back here and replace this hard-coded notification with the actual notifications um, that we get from generating that JSON. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so let's pull this uh, JavaScript or the JSON that we hard-coded in here before and let's replace this with rendering that exact same template that our application um, uses for notifications. So that's actually the notifications index.json.jbuilder file. And so this is the file that you want to render from inside this other template. And you can actually simply do that by calling render. You can call it template, otherwise it will look for a partial. And here you just say notifications, index. And because this is an HTML request, you're actually gonna need to specify formats as JSON to, in order to force it to render the JSON format. So that's really all you're going to have to do template wise. But remember, this uh, JSON JBuilder file is rendering the at notifications variable that's set in the notifications controller. So this is the unread notifications for the current user. And we're not necessarily going to be inside this controller all the time. This is the application template. So this is for every single page that uh, is rendered, we're gonna need this variable to be queried. Now that's gonna be pretty quick, um, and so you're gonna be able to do that uh, to preload it if your servers are fast and scaled up uh, to the point where this is going to be making sense to preload this information. So we'd actually need to go into the application controller and set up a before action uh, called set notifications. And we're gonna only do this if the user is signed in, which is a devise method. And so here we can say set notifications and run the exact same code as our notifications controller and voila, that should be all we need to do in order to uh, set those notifications up dynamically. If we inspect that um, 
that notifications again, we'll see that it's automatically parsed into a JSON object because the data notifications is already handled that way, which is pretty nifty. And so our notifications notifications.js.coffee really just needs to stay exactly the same, but keep this set interval. So that's pretty cool. And you might, it might make sense to rename the uh, setup then and move this out. So you would want to set up this, um, this check to be run instead of then we'll want to do it there. And then we'll also like get new notifications every five seconds instead of setup. So this would be get new notifications. And that should do it. And we need to tab that all over. And of course, get new notifications should be set to the um, instance method there, or the at method. And it probably makes sense to also do this um, inside the if statement. So we'll check to make sure that that object exists before we do any of the work with it. So these are really the two setup methods that we're gonna have now. And then this will just be called every five seconds. So that means we should be able to go back to this page and then go to our other user and say, hello. And we should go back to this. And if we wait for about five seconds, we should now see that number change to four and it does. So that is the secondary method of sending data over to your JavaScript. Though on the one hand, you have Ajax in order to pull data over um, directly from the JavaScript. And then you also have your HTML with extra data hidden inside of it in order to give the HTML data to work with immediately. So that's something that um, plays a lot of different purposes. There's a lot of different use cases for this. So for example, um, if you wanna make sure the notifications are rendered immediately, um, then it makes sense to potentially embed that inside the HTML. And the reason for that is because when you're doing this, sure you have an extra query and sure you have to render an extra template, but you actually are saving an entire request to the server um, through the Ajax portion of the code. And that is going to save a whole lot more time because that would have to also run the query, also render the template, but it has to do the entire stack of Rails. So it has to go through and set up the connection, parse the request, uh, prepare the request, do all of the Rails stack. And here you're already doing that. And so you're just including a little extra data that you know is gonna be needed anyways. This is uh, useful as well to send data initially over to uh, React or Ember or Angular or any other front end framework or even just jQuery like I showed here. And that will allow your JavaScript to run instantaneously when the page loads, as opposed to waiting for a request afterwards and doing all of that stuff. So it helps um, include sort of, or minimize sort of the request overhead that you have to do in order to get your JavaScript up and running on the client side. And then also this is useful for any time that you're doing something with uh, Stripe, for example. So you'll notice that we would put like a meta tag up here that would include your Stripe meta um, your Stripe public key inside the meta tag. And then that's a way for us to send that data over to the Stripe JavaScript library in order to tokenize the credit cards on checkout. So um, you can use this for a bunch of things. For example, you could even um, include a meta tag up here that denotes whether the user is logged in or not. And that would enable your JavaScript to know whether or not it can perform certain functions without having to just make the request and uh, attempt it and see if it gets rejected or not. So it, it is a way to sort of cut down some of the requests and things just to pass data into your JavaScript that it might need to know. So this episode um, is definitely a little variation from the usual, a little more heavy JavaScript focus, but actually this is gonna be the foundations of sort of the React screencast that we end up getting into in the future because we'll use it, the um, React Rails gem probably to render the React stuff server side and you're gonna actually have pretty much the exact same functionality um, when you're doing that. So this is a little prep for that and those should be coming very soon. So hope you enjoyed this episode and I will talk to you next week. Peace.